Alright guys, this is a long plane review for The Way of the Exploding Fist on the Amstrad CPC, released by Melbourne House in 1985. So this is one of the earliest 1v1 fighting games ever, long before your Street Fighters and even International Karate, and it's arguably still one of the best. Now as you can see from the back of the box here, it says Become a master of this mysterious ancient art. Progress from novice to tenth down and test your strength and discipline with 18 different manoeuvres including blocks, flying kicks, leg sweeps, roundhouse and even somersaults. There we go. And the weight of the exploding fist has it all. <laughs> what a great name for the game too. Now as you can see from the bottom there, the game was endorsed by Jeffrey Thompson who was a karate champion around that time. And this was later re-released on the Mastertronic's Ricochet budget label, which is where I got the game, and I really enjoyed this as a kid. Anyway, let's get on to the uh, long play, and uh, we're playing a uh, cracked version of the game, just so we can load it from disc, because this wasn't, I don't think this was ever released on disc, only on cassette at the time. This was 1985. And uh, the hacker has found some hidden code that the uh, coder left, change the colours on the uh, loading screen which you can do so by pressing the F key on most of the uh, crap versions of this game that you can get on disc. And there you go, not sure if I like the uh, pink or the orange better. Uh, the pink really stands out but I think the orange probably suits the game better. Anyway, straight in, no messing, no fuss, no, no title screen, just straight into a rolling live demo of the game with computer versus computer. So we're going to kick off straight into the action here after a nice jingle of oriental music and quite literally kick off as you can see there. We're just rushing this opponent with mid kicks and he's quite easy to dispatch. In fact the novice first and second dan guys are pretty similar and easy to get rid of but the difficulty and intelligence and aggressiveness of your opponents does increase all the way up to 10th dan. And there we go, the mid kick there being very, very useful. Um, so um, basically you need to uh, hold your move. Oh, there's a roundhouse kick there, oof. So the roundhouse kick, you have to hold the direction of the roundhouse kick for the longest time. That's the most difficult move to pull off and most easy to counter by the opponent. So you wouldn't want to do that on later levels. Uh, but you can cancel your move halfway through by releasing um, the direction you pushed and then start another move. Um, so bear that in mind, that, that's quite unique and important to how to do the fighting in this game. And quite impressive is to, ooh, big roundhouse kick to the face there, oof. And the scoring system is you gotta win, well first of all, you gotta win two uh, rounds to move up to the next dam. And to win a round, you have to get two full yin yangs, as you can see, one's just appeared there in the top left. And there we go. That is the round and bout one. Um, but the scoring system uses like full and a half points or full and a half yin yangs. And it apparently depends on how well executed the move was. It's not explained how a perfect hit is to get a full point, uh, is achieved or whatever, but I assume it's at the, uh, if you're at the slightly wrong distance, um, you only get half a point. Um, but from Wikipedia, the ever reliable source, <laughs> this system of scoring is known as Shobu Nihon Kumite and is used in real life in many traditional styles of karate. A half yin yang represents a waza ari, a committed but not decisive technique, and a full yin yang represents an ippon score, full point decisive finishing blow. And there we go. And if you're after like more higher scores in this game and more points, the more difficult moves gives you a higher score. So like a roundhouse kick we saw there earlier will score you more points. There is an action there. But those uh, forward sweeps and short jab kicks to the shins will be very, very useful and handy on the later opponents. And there we go, one again there. Okay, um, 
So uh, the original version was the Commodore 64 one coming out in June of 1985. Uh, but let's have a look at who, who was behind this game and the Amstrad version. Well, this is from a company called Beam Software, which is basically, basically the developers of Melbourne House and their own in-house development team. This was designed by Greg Barnett. He was also responsible for Yasaji Yojimbo, a.k.a. Samurai, Samurai Warrior. Uh, that's the one with the rabbit. Um, coding was by Cameron Duffy, who also did Usagi Ujimbo on the Amstrad. And also on coding duties was a guy called Damien Woffero. However, he doesn't appear to have done any of the Amstrad games. Um, graphics were done by a guy called Greg Holland. Again, um, no other Amstrad games I could find by him. And the cover, in, uh, cover illustration on the box art was done by the ever-excellent David Rowe. Who's a lovely bloke. Um, I met him in person. He signed my Friday the 13th poster. The one using the budget re-release anyway. Um, so, yeah. According to an article in uh, Zap64, the Commodore 64 version... Oh, oh, look, we ran out of time there. But I had the most points, so I win and I move on to fourth down. Woohoo! Anyway, um, according to an article in Zap64, the uh, C64 version... And therefore, the Amstrad version, with its identical sprites and animation, Exploding Fist uses over 600 sprite images, apparently. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but there is an awful lot of them. And the animation here, guys, is absolutely fantastic. I like the sprite design. Obviously, IK and IK Plus are heavily copied this. Um, and it set the standard for 1v1 fighting games on the home computers. Um... It is still great fun to play to this day, and I love the combat. Look at that, how I was like blocking low moves there and and then countering and stuff like that. This is a game of judging your opponent and taking a measured approach. It's not a rushing jobby. Well, I did on the first few uh, Dans there, but now we're on fourth Dan and things are a lot tougher. So, you know, I'm trying to catch him out of, of a long length of the uh, leg sweep there. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> And if you're up close and personal, use the jabs and punches. Now, the jabs are achieved by not using the fire button, just pushing a direction. So up and right for high punch, uh, down and right for the little jab I was using there. And if you crouch, if you push right, you can do a little uh, crouch punch. And without pressing the fire button, if you push back and up or back and down, you do a somersault, either forward or back. Now, the kicks are achieved by using the fire button. So fire button and up to do the flying kick, which looks really impressive. Fire and right there for the mid kick, which I just used. Fire up and right for the high kick, which I really use, um, but it's pretty decent. Uh, fire down and right for the short jab kick. And fire and down for the leg sweep. Fire back and down does the backwards leg sweep. So if the, the opponent somersaults over you, you can get them from behind. And again, fire up and back will uh, do a backwards high kick. Again, to catch them out if they've somersaulted over you. And the controls are reversed if you're um, facing the other direction. Uh, there you go. Um, but yes, um, this game was voted Game of the Year at the Golden Joystick Awards uh, at, in 1985. It also apparently was the best-selling Amstrad game that month, eventually selling over half a million copies in Europe across all the formats. And there we go. So yeah, um, I love this game to bits. Um, it's a game that I still enjoy playing in short bursts today in 2019 as I did as a kid back then. I was never very good at the game because I just wanted to rush in and do my big kicks. But you have to learn to take your time, have patience and try and predict what the opponent's going to do and counter. And oh yes, of course, blocking. Blocking is very, very important in this game. And he uses like the Street Fighter 2 system, long before Street Fighter 2, of if you were pushed back, um, you would do a block. So if you hold back, he just blocks. So, wow. I, don't, I, don't, I doubt that the uh, Capcom ever played this game and saw that, but the, that was doing the, the Street Fighter 2 style blocks long before Street Fighter. There we go. <laughs> uh, but very, very good. Um, as we progress here, let's talk about the other versions of the game very quickly. The Commodore 64 was the original version. It has very nice oriental, oriental style music, very rough uh, sounding sampled speech, but it has four different backdrops and backgrounds. 
Mm, which the Amstrad doesn't. It also has a bizarre sub-game after achieving 4th Dan, where you have to punch a stampeding bull. And no, I'm not joking. Otherwise, the sprites are identical and it plays identical to the Amstrad. The ZX Spectrum version has the same jingle of the music that the CPC has, but on the one-channel speaker, the speccy uses this, this very, very jingle. And and the sounds and it sounds a bit rubbish to be honest. But however, the sound effects are the same crunching ones you hear here, um, and pretty good. Uh, uh, also, the Specky version features some surprisingly colourful backgrounds for the Specky, and several of them are uh, unlike the uh, Amstrad version, sadly. So the sprites don't look quite the same as the Amstrad and Commodore 64, or as nice on the Specky, but all have the uh, the same animation. Well, it has all basically the same animations as we have here. Um, however, the Specky version plays a little bit slower and a, a lower frame rate to the other two versions, and it's also missing the, uh, the bull subgame like the Amstrad one. Now, this also appeared on the BBC Micro on Acorn Electron. Both versions are identical to each other. Uh, the sprites are the same as the Amstrad and Commodore, apart from the fact they are very jaundiced and very yellow. Uh, but the frame rate on the animation is really bad, with a very noticeable tearing and like the sprites sort of splitting in half and catching up with each other. It's really bad, actually. Um, so far, it's the worst version, although it has some quite nice music, which is different to the Amsterdam Commodore. Um, and it's throughout the game, and it also has different backgrounds. Um, and lastly, it also appeared on the Commodore 16, which weirdly has the same music as the BBC version, not the Commodore 64, but only on one channel. Uh, but this looks the most different of a lot smaller squash sprites and um, that look very different and therefore different animation too. It has very simple backgrounds as well. Probably the worst version of the game, but still very, very decent for this computer and very, very good. So. There isn't really a stinker um, on any uh, any computer of this game. And I think the Amstrad version is really, really good. Uh, magazines uh, at the time, uh, well, they kind of agree with me. Uh, this was this game actually was reviewed in the very first issue of Amstrad Action in October of 1985. In fact, it was their lead game and the first game they ever reviewed. It's, there you go, interesting stuff. It also therefore has the honour of the first game to receive the Master Game Award from Amstrad Action, with them rating it a whopping 94%. With 92% for graphics, 64% for Sonics, that's fair, 96% for Grab Factor, and 95% for Stain Power. There you go. And here we are, game. Okay, let's come concentrate back on the game here. We're at 9th down now. We're very close to 10th down. And after we've got uh, we've reached tenth down, I'm going to talk to you guys about sequels to the game, which uh, gets very interesting and confusing. So look out for that after the end of the video. Trying the cheeky roundhouse kick here, but that mid kick is starting to become very very handy again. Now with the AI, oh, we both hit each other at the same time there, so we restart. Now with the AI here, I can't honestly tell if the computer learns that if you are spamming the same move over and over. I, I have tried to test this and it seems to do that. It seems to predict that like if you just come in with flying kicks every time, it starts. It seems to start to counter it or is it just by chance? I don't know. But as, it, as you can see here, the computer opponent's getting quite good at blocking, he's getting quite aggressive and he's getting very good at countering moves at times. But the one thing I find works very, very well a lot of the time is start off with a flying kick. He will block the flying kick, <coughs> excuse me, and then do the short jab kick to the shins. There you go. Exactly, there you go. And that kind, that kind of is a move that you can reuse a lot, and that's got me through the game here. Oh, here we are on 10th Dan. We've reached 10th Dan. So let's just see how far we can get on 10th Dan. So essentially, guys, I pretty much have completed the game. We'll see if we can get at least two. Oof! I mucked up my roundhouse kick there. I counted it halfway through and ended up facing the other direction. Now, it, that, that can be useful to quickly turn around if needs be. But it was uh, a mistake there and to my disadvantage. Ooh. There we go. 
So basically, guys, if I get what win one more round against this guy here, I will declare this long play complete because the game just then loops over and over and over on 10th Dan. Oh, he got a full Ippon on me there. <sighs> Realised I got in too close there, so I'm going to somersault out. I try. Oh, no! <laughs> I, tried this, I tried this cheeky roundhouse kick there to show off. That didn't connect, but the jab punch did. So use your punches when you're upping up close on them. And there we go. There we go. That's it. Two rounds on 10th down. We've done it, guys. That is the game beaten. <laughs> oh, so we're going to do maybe a few more rounds here uh, just to see how far we can get. God damn, that short jab kick is so good. And that's fire down and uh, forward. Look at that. There it is again. Oh, we got that one as well. So at this point, guys, you're now just racking up high score. And it's a shame there isn't kind of an ending or anything new or different. It's a very, very, very simple game. But this was 1985, uh, the early days of coding and making games or for systems. And so it wasn't really as expected that you would uh, have to have lots of content in the game. People were less, uh, less demanding back then. But however, I don't care. This is really, really good stuff. And it's still really good fun today. And gameplay is king. As are the graphics, very, very nice. So guys, as a final review score, I'm gonna give this one a just, just, I'm gonna agree with Amsterdam action actually. I'm gonna give, give this a nine out of 10. It is probably the best 1v1 fighting game on the Amstrad. Now there's IK Plus, which has three fighters. You can still technically class it as a 1v1, which plays a lot faster, a lot quicker, a lot more aggressive. Um, so you have to more fast action gameplay with nice music in the background and slightly better graphics. Maybe IK Plus is the one for you. But if you're after a more of a measured fighting game, more in the Street Fighter 2 style. So if you're a Street Fighter 2 fan, go for in, uh, the way of the exploding fist. And there we go. That was uh, I finally got knocked out there, but we did it. So we're at 10th down and um, I kind of screw. Uh, there's a little bug. Some some sometimes happens with entering your name in the high score table. So I kind of failed to do that here. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyway, let's talk about sequels very quickly before we end the video. Now, this is where it gets confusing. Um, oh, yeah, there's the high score table uh, crashing on me. Never mind. Um, in 1986, a sequel was released. Uh, the Specky and the Commodore 64 got Fist 2 The Legend Continues, which was a side on scrolling um, action game with some 1v1 fighting. It wasn't as well received, uh, though, and the Amstrad didn't get this at all. Instead, the Amstrad got The Weight of the Exploding Fist Plus which is an extremely rare, and, and only this uh, low-res box scan of the Spanish version exists online, and which added four rather nice backgrounds to the game. However, you had to choose uh, them from the from a menu before you started, which is, which is a bit of a shame, and it, and it doesn't swap around after fights like the Commodore 64 original did. Um, so this is the weird bit. Two years later, in 1989, Exploding Fist Plus, which is basically the same name, and with the same box art, arrived on the Specky and the Commodore 64, but was a whole new game which introduced a third fighter directly copying and competing with International Karate Plus, but no Amstrad version. So it used the same name as the Amstrad <laughs> version where it added in the four backgrounds but it was a totally different game for different systems but that didn't come on the Amstrad very very confusing I hope you're getting where I'm going here um so there you go I don't know why Melbourne House did that I would assume that so with the other versions of the first game all getting different back backgrounds that includes the BBC version and even the bloody Commodore 16 version I think it did um there was no reason why the Amstrad couldn't um have fit them in uh, on the tape and load it all in plus the very good sales on the CPC so I guess Melbourne House realized they needed to remedy this and a year later threw out Exploding Fist Fuss uh, <laughs> sorry Exploding Fist Plus <laughs> with the uh, additional backgrounds but then released the same name game on the Commodore and Specky but, that, but it was a whole different game of, and a third game in the series very strange very strange but there we go so guys that was the way of the Exploding Fist Plus I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 thank you very very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you all again very soon goodbye 
So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.